What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to set up an enshrouded server using Steam CMD. If you'd like to do this on the Steam version using this dedicated server here, check the description down below for a guide on how to do so. This one's going to be specifically focusing on if you want to run it on a computer next to you, a computer on the cloud, etc., how you would do it there. Obviously, you won't need to install Steam at all, such as this here. You'll be using a command line to not only make sure the server stays up to date, but of course, launch up your server etc. In the description down below, you'll find a link to my website where you can find all of these commands and texts for easy copy and paste. The first thing that you will need, however, is Steam CMD. In the description down below, you'll find a link to this page. Simply click Windows here under Download and click the small one over here to download Steam CMD. Then when it's done, you'll be opening it up and extracting this to a folder such as on your desktop. I'll make one called Ench. Good enough. I'll open it up and drag Steam CMD out into this folder, just like that. Now we can start creating a script file to automatically update in Shrouded. Right click, choose new text document, and we'll be renaming it to launch in Shrouded server or something along these lines. It can be whatever you want. Dot BAT. Make sure you replace dot TXT, get this pop up and click yes. If you don't see the EXT or TXT, click view at the very top, show and make sure file name extensions as well as hidden items is ticked. On Windows 10, you'll find a view at the very top and these two buttons on the far right. Once you've done so, right click this and edit it with Notepad or a third party text editor such as Notepad++, Sublime Text, etc. You'll find the following text on my website. As an example, I'll use this guide. I haven't written one for Enchanted just yet. Scroll down until you see the first big block of text preparing to launch your server and simply click the copy button here. There'll be a bit more than just this. In fact, it should launch your server just after downloading. But for now, I'm just going to run this first set of commands in order to install the Enchanted dedicated server and quit Steam CMD. So after saving it, we can launch the .bat where you'll see shortly after Steam CMD starts and downloads a bunch of files and folders to this directory here. Then shortly after Steam is done updating, it'll connect, log in anonymously, so you don't need any Steam account to do this, and it'll then download the enshrouded dedicated server. Now this of course is completely dependent on the speed of your internet and could be either really quick or really slow. You'll just need to wait for this to complete. Assuming I do add more code to that first bit of text that we copied and pasted, your server will shortly boot up just after this installation process is complete. For me it won't, so I can easily show you the folder structure, etc. Okay, now that it's done downloading in Steam apps, followed by common enshrouded server, you'll find all of these server files here. If the server hasn't launched up automatically, which again for you it should, simply run the enshrouded server exe once to generate the missing files. As soon as you see host online, you can quit the dedicated server. Now inside of here you should see enshrouded server.json. Open this with any text editor such as Notepad, Notepad++ or Sublime Text, etc. In here we'll be changing the name to whatever you want. For example, I'll make it Troubleshoots Server. We can set a password. Optionally, if you're a power user, a save directory and log directory, you can change the IP if you'd like to bind it to a specific network adapter. Just leave it as four zeros if you don't really care. You don't need to change anything. Game port and query port you should leave as is unless you're running multiple servers on your system, in which case you can change the just make sure to keep them one apart. Finally, slot count. You can change how many players can join your server. 16 is the default, so I'll be leaving it here. All right, now that we have our server set up, we could technically run it and join it if we're on the same computer as it. However, if you'd like people sitting next to you to join, you'll need to make sure that these ports are allowed through your Windows firewall. In the description down below, once again on that same page, you can scroll down further and you should find a colorful block of text much like this. Simply copy this and you'll see these commands. Essentially, these allow enshrouded server through your Windows firewall with these two ports over here for both TCP and UDP, inbound and outbound. All we need to do is with these copied, open up a PowerShell window. So start PowerShell, right click, run as admin. We're inside of here, we'll right click or control V to paste and hit enter a few times to make sure everything's run. Assuming you're not using a third party firewall on your system, such as an antivirus with a firewall, there's not much more you need to do here. Otherwise, if you are, you'll need to allow it through those firewalls as well. Finally, if you'd like people on the internet to join your server, you'll need to port forward. 
Don't worry, this is simpler than it sounds. And of course, you'll find many detailed guides and in-depth tutorials in the description down below as usual. To show you exactly what you need to do, I'll give you an example. There are many different kinds of routers, so I won't be able to show you a guide for every single one of them. Instead, I've created this example page to show you roughly what you need to do. Essentially, you'll be entering internal and external ports 15636 and 15637. If you can enter a range, you can enter them something as such, comma separated maybe, or even hyphen separated for a range. It really depends on your router. You'll be port forwarding both 15636 and 7 through both TCP and UDP. So if you're not able to choose a combined protocol, you'll do it once for TCP and once for UDP. Then for your local IP address, it may have things partially filled in like this one here, 1921681, where I just need to fill in the last few digits. Otherwise, you may need to type in the entire thing. In order to find the IP address of your specific computer, hit start and open up a terminal or command prompt window. In here, you'll be typing in IP config one word and hitting enter. This will show you all the information about all your network adapters. Find the way that you're connected to the internet, IPv4, and you'll find your local IP address here for your computer on your local network. I simply need to enter the last few digits, which is just 50. I'll add new, and just like that, we've now port forwarded our dedicated server to the internet. If you have multiple routers between you and the internet, such as a fiber box to another router, then another one, then your PC, you'll need to port forward at each step along the chain. So for example, your fiber router port forwards to your first router, the first to the second, and the second to your computer, all pointing to each other, such as this here. It's simple enough, but if you need help, you'll find guides in the description down below explaining everything in great detail. Now that we've allowed the enshrouded dedicated server through our Windows firewall and we've port forwarded, we should, after about 5 or 10 minutes, see it on the in-game server list and be able to join it, assuming you run it first, just like that. Whenever this window is open, your server should be running and people should likely be able to join it. In order to join it on your own system, head into Steam, followed by View, then Game Servers, and in here, head across to Favorites, where we'll click the plus in the bottom right, and in here, we'll type in an IP address. For your own local server, I'll type in 127.0.0.1 colon 15637, which is the query port, and click OK. It should then be added to the list, and you'll see it here. You can right click, choose View Server Info, and you'll see more information about your server. If it's running on a different computer, you'll be entering a very similar command, just it'll be 192.168.145 or whatever it is, if it's running on a computer next to you, for example. If you're connecting to a server over the internet, it'll of course be the external IP of whoever it is, 123.456.789, 123 for example, and you'll be able to join the server. Once you see it, you can double click or choose it and click connect, where shortly after your game should launch, and assuming you don't see it on the public list already, now that we've added it here, it should appear. So play followed by join, and in here you should see your server favorited at the very top. I'm running it locally and on a different computer on my network, so they're both showing up here. You can join either one of these, and loading in, just like that, we're now playing on our dedicated server. That's it, it's as simple as that. I'll run out here, show you that it's a fresh server, head straight outside, and there you go. This is our dedicated server, we're playing on it, and at this point our friends should be able to join us and play in it too. Once again, you'll find all these commands and detailed text information slash guides in the description down below, as well as more details on port forwarding. That's it. You now know how to set up your own dedicated enshrouded server using Steam CMD. If you'd like to do it with the normal Steam version, you'll find that linked down below as well. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.